You're listening to episode 71 of On Purpose with Alex Beaton. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing exactly how I manage my time and stay productive as a small business owner. This episode contains every single thing I wish I knew about time management and productivity when I first got started. I share mindsets you must adopt if you want to truly maximize your time. I share exactly how you should be using your calendar on a daily basis to find more time in your day. I share the book that changed the way I prioritize my tasks, the online course that revolutionized how I manage my tasks, and the apps that I use on a daily basis and why you should be using these too. These mindsets, apps, and systems have completely changed my life, like literally guys, have completely changed my life, and I hope they do the same for you too. This is On Purpose, episode 71. Do you ever feel like you're trying to balance it all? Nourishing your health while growing your business and living a life well lived? And no matter how hard you try, sometimes you slip from purpose driven into autopilot. Take a deep breath, relax, and let's get you back to where you belong on purpose. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Alex Beaton here. And hopefully you're listening to this on a Monday, which means it's a brand new week. This is episode 71 of On Purpose with Alex Beaton. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about productivity and time management, which was particularly inspired by last week's episode with Kate McKibben, where we spoke a lot about automation. It got me thinking a lot about You know, what do we do during our weeks to make sure that we are making the best use of our time? How can we be as productive and efficient as possible? How can we take responsibility for the tasks that need to get done while still leaving time for self care, making sure that we are self aware, making sure that we are taking care of ourselves? Being an entrepreneur is so challenging. It is one of the most beautiful self-development tools that exists and that I truly, truly believe that. I think entrepreneurship is something that puts everything to the test. And this podcast is really here to help support you along your entrepreneurial journey, not only as an entrepreneur, but as a human being. And productivity and time management, that is Two, those are two huge topics when it comes to that journey. And so that's what I want to specifically talk to you guys about today. Before we dive into all the goodness, which by the way, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite apps. I'm going to be sharing with you systems that work really well for me. We're going to be talking about a lot of different good things today. But before we jump into that, I just want to say a huge thank you Last week, we celebrated the one-year anniversary of the podcast, and I set myself a goal to reach 400 global reviews before the end of the week. So I gave myself seven days to get 100 reviews. And when I set that goal, it seemed super high because over the past year, we've gotten 300 reviews. So how was I expecting to get 100 reviews more in seven days? But I set the goal and I put myself to the task (laughs) and we achieved it. And I just want to say thank you so much. It means the world to me to have your support and nothing encourages me, inspires me, and motivates me to continue creating epic content for you guys more than when I scroll through those global reviews. So to everyone who left a global review, thank you. If you haven't left a review yet, you can do so on the iTunes podcast app on your iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, you can do it on your iPad. If you don't have an iPad, you can do it from your laptop. Just download iTunes and you can go and leave a review from there. Thank you in advance for everyone who takes a few moments to go and leave a review if you haven't already. Now let's dive in to today's epic conversation. So the first place that I want to start with this conversation is just taking note of the fact that productivity and time management is a skill that you are going to be working on and honing for the rest of your life. It is one of those things that you should continually be learning about and trying to improve upon. And yes, it is something that takes, like I said, consistent time, effort and energy and focus 
to improving, but it's something that, you know, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It does get easier and easier, but it is something that you always have to be working towards and always have to be prioritizing and using. It's one of those things that doesn't necessarily like it doesn't have a direct impact on your income. Like, I don't know, it's just one of those things. It just doesn't. However, it helps support you in all of your activities, which then helps you, you know, spend more time with your loved ones and make more money. So of course it does have an excellent long-term effect, even though in the moment it can feel a little annoying. So that's the first thing is just to know that like, this is a long-term commitment to productivity and time management and improving those skills. The second thing to note is that moving forward, whenever you say, I don't have the time to do something, really what you're saying is, this is not a priority for me. And that's totally fine. It's totally fine to have priorities and to have things that are not on your list of priorities. But for example, for me, if I look back at my past seven days, I have not been working out as much as I'd like to be. And of course, I've been using the excuse, I don't have the time. But the reality is, it's just not a priority for me. And so when you use those words, it really just acts as like a red flag to you of like, hey, you need to wake up. If working out is not one of your priorities, then this is a big problem and you need to change something to make sure that it becomes a priority. The next thing is the importance of measuring it. And this goes for anything in your business or life. If you are someone who wants to eat more healthy or work out more or lose weight or whatever, whatever goal you might have for yourself. If you are not measuring it, then I mean, you might as well not even be working towards the goal, right? We need to be able to measure our progress and and measure what it is that we are working on improving. So in this case, when we are dealing with time, track it. I can't tell you what a game changer this is for me, tracking your time. And this is something that I've done on and off for the last, I want to say like seven, eight years. Time tracking gives you so much clarity and visibility on where you are spending your time. If you don't know where your time is gone at the end of the day, then you don't have any clarity on on how to improve it, on how to be better tomorrow, on where you're wasting time, on maybe how you could rearrange things that would make more sense and maybe save you half an hour. If you're not tracking it, you have no visibility and no self-awareness. So one of the big things that I'm going to encourage you to do after this episode is track your time. Track every single waking moment. And yes, of course, there's an app for that. (laughs) But there's so many different ways that you can do it. I used to use an app called Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. And just so you guys know, all of the apps mentioned in this episode will all be available for you in the show notes. If you go to podcast.alexbeaton.com, each and every single episode has its own post where you can see all of the show notes. It's actually quite magic. So yes, I used to use Toggle, which I very much enjoyed. I then started using Google Calendar where I created my own Google Calendar. So it was separate to all of my other like events and tasks and whatever. And basically in every moment of every day, just writing down, you know, what am I doing during this time? What am I working on during this time? And then another time tracking app that I've started using is called Hours Tracker, H-O-U-R-S Tracker. Now, the important part about time tracking is that you don't want something that's automatically tracking your time. So for example, if you have an app installed in your computer, there's lots of different apps that you can install that will automatically track what you're working on. And that's not really what we want. We want something that allows us to constantly throughout the day be in that state of mind of like, okay, what am I doing? What am I working on? And just the habit of like clocking in and clocking out when you're doing specific tasks It's just going to make you so much more aware of how you're spending your time and therefore take more responsibility for how you're spending your time. So big action step moving forward, track your time. The next thing that I've been implementing that I've really been enjoying is planning my day in advance and time blocking absolutely everything. I've spent years of my life running my own business 
with a to-do list. And yes, to-do lists are fantastic. They are wonderful. I use the Eisenhower matrix to divide my to-do list into basically priorities. What do I need to get done first, second, third, fourth, et cetera. We're going to talk about the Eisenhower matrix in a little bit. So don't worry too much about that right now. But one thing that I've noticed is that at the end of a workday, I look back and I'm like, what did I do today? Like, how did it take me so long to get these specific tasks finished? And I would feel so much guilt and I would beat myself up and be like, oh, another day where I didn't really finish that many things. And now what I've started doing is time blocking everything. So at the beginning of every day, I look at my tasks for the day and I look at my calendar and I block off time in my calendar for each particular task based on the maximum that I believe should be allotted to that particular task. Now, of course, sometimes tasks take longer than expected, whatever, cool, adjust as you're going. But by doing this, it really shows me the urgency. If I say I'm going to record this podcast and I'm giving myself three hours to get it done, I need to finish the podcast within that three hour time period. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get through the rest of the tasks in that particular day. This has become vital. I notice now, and I've, I've been doing this for the last two weeks, and I've noticed what an impact it makes and how I show up in my day. When I don't time block out my day, I just feel like I have so much more freedom and everything feels a little bit like up in the air. And because I'm not sure how all of my tasks are going to fit into my day, I am less protective of my time. Whereas when I know what those boundaries are and when I have everything time blocked into my calendar, I can be like, no, I can't go and hang out with you by the pool because I've got to finish this. And if I don't finish this, then I'm not going to be moving forward with my tasks for this week. So that's another really big thing for me right now is time blocking. Now, I would say that these two things, hand in hand, number one, the time blocking, so actually putting it into your calendar and scheduling out your day so that you know exactly, and guys, I mean everything, right? Everything from like, what time are you waking up in the morning? How long are you spending getting ready? When are you going to the gym? How long is it taking you to drive to the gym? What different tasks are you working on throughout the day? At what time do you expect to take breaks? How long are you taking off for your lunch break? What are you doing in the evenings after work has finished? Everything from personal life to work life, time block everything so that you are using your time as efficiently as possible. So time blocking and time tracking really go hand in hand. And I would say like, honestly, this is something that you should try to do consistently and just bring it into your daily habits. It's just such a game changer. So commit to it and be like, okay, for the next three months, I'm going to really give this thing a go. Take note that whenever you're starting a new habit, you're going to fall off the bandwagon. So right now I've been doing something for the last four weeks where I've been every single week checking in with what my goals are for that week, where I'm at, did I finish, did I accomplish everything on each particular day? I've been doing it for four weeks and there are still days when I don't check in. And it's only because when you're building a new habit, it takes time. So I only say this to reassure you that if you start with the time blocking in the time calendar and you do a great job in week one and you kind of fall off the bandwagon in week two, don't beat yourself up. That is a part of the process of it becoming a true habit. So just get back on the horse and carry on. Another really important thing when it comes to productivity and time management is, especially if you're working from home like I do, is figuring out what your distractions are and removing them all together. So I know that for me, a really big distraction when I work from home is Nick. As much as I love working from home with him and, you know, he's self-employed too, he's a graphic designer and it's fun like when he just like pops into my office and he's like, hey, oh my gosh, look at this, whatever, whatever. It's also incredibly distracting. As human beings, when we get into a workflow, we only get more and more and more focused the longer that we stay within that task, right? Of course, there's a limit and you need breaks and whatever, but 
it's good to stay focused. It's good to build that momentum. When someone bursts into your office, when you're in the middle of doing something, that can be so distracting. So things like that, you know, how can I remove that as a distraction by communicating to Nick, Hey, if you see my door closed, please do not disturb. If you see me with my noise canceling headphones on, please do not disturb, obviously, unless it's an emergency. So looking at things like that, looking at your, your phone, you know, When you have your phone sitting next to you on your desk, is it a distraction? I feel like I'm actually really good focusing in on my work when I need to and not allowing my phone to distract me, but it took me a long time to kind of break that addiction of when I'm working, just being like, eh, I feel kind of stuck. I'm feeling the resistance. Let me just pick up my phone and check Instagram. Every time you do that, it slows you down so much. It builds more resistance. It cuts off your momentum. When you are trying to get work done, you need to be like a bodyguard for your productivity. Anything that creates resistance, anything that's interrupting your momentum needs to be deleted and just gotten rid of, right? So if it means taking your phone and putting it in a drawer, if it means leaving your phone in another room, if it means turning off your phone for the hour and a half that you're sitting down to focus on whatever particular task, then do it, do it, do it, do it. So minimize distractions and manage your attention, You know, we all like to think that we have an unlimited amount of attention every day and that we have an unlimited amount of willpower every day. And science shows us that we do not, right? So every day, how I like to think about it is that you wake up and maybe you have like, I don't know, 15 units of attention and 15 units of willpower, And every single decision that you make, every single task that you do, every single thing that you focus on throughout the day, you're removing one unit, removing one unit, removing one unit. At the beginning of the day, it feels like, oh my gosh, like I have so much willpower. I have so much, like I'm feeling super attentive and da 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 da. And and you feel like it's just this unlimited resource, but that is where you are incorrect, my friend. And so limiting it from the get go, limiting the amount of scroll time that you give yourself in the morning, that's so big. Like, Do not waste time scrolling through Instagram in the morning because you're just like depleting your resources. Stay focused on the things that matter most, right? So craft your mornings in particular around the most important things that need to get done. So for example, I like to wake up in the morning and I know for me, journaling and planning my day is super important. So I set aside an hour of time every single morning to do that. From there, what I've started to do is put my most important work at the beginning of the day, my creative work, my flow work, the work in which I need the most of my attention resources and the most of my willpower resources to get it done, sit down and focus. Creative work, knowledge work is so different than the work that used to go on back in the day when you were in like a, what's it called? Assembly line? I think it's assembly line. Anyway, regardless, where you're literally just doing one physical task after the next, after the next, after the next, and you don't have to think about anything. But nowadays, especially as business owners, we are knowledge workers. We are using our creativity. We are using our brain power to create things, right? We are all creatives, whether you consider yourself a creative or not. Like essentially, if you're running your own business, that's what you're doing. So to use that special, like I said, your resources are high at the beginning of the day. Use it wisely. Don't check email at the beginning of the day. Don't do those types of tasks that are draining and depleting at the beginning of the day because you're wasting all of your precious resources on something that you could just do at the end of the day and just kind of like push through, right? That's why I like to put my creative work at the beginning of the day. The next thing is to understand that the more efficient that you can be, the better. And this is really a lesson that I've learned over the past year. Ever since I brought Laura on board, she's completely revolutionized the way that my business is organized online, digitally. And, you know, small things (laughs) go a very long way when it comes to efficiency. And so anything you can do that's going to save you time is going to be huge. I'll never forget when I first started using a task management app. I used to use Things. I now use Asana. That was a game changer for me because instead of me having to write out my tasks every single day on paper and like, and that's what I used to use. Like, honestly, I look back at using paper and I just like cringe because I I was 
not nearly as efficient and productive as I could be. And I did not even know. Now that I'm using Asana, it just makes things so much easier, like shortcuts, being able to duplicate tasks, being able to have repeat tasks. It takes so much of the thinking out of what I do. The less thinking that you can do, the better. If you can automate something, why would you not automate it, right? So things like shortcuts, things like templates, you know, what can you automate in your business that's going to make it easier for you? Last week, we spoke about automation when it comes to your marketing funnels. This week, I really want you to think to yourself, what can I automate within my day to day that would make work easier for myself, right? So that's another thing is by figuring out quicker ways to make things happen and to do things, you are saving yourself time and that adds up. Time is our most precious resource. And I wish everyone listening to this really let that sink in because as entrepreneurs, especially new entrepreneurs, a tendency that I see, and I had it myself when I first got started, is I'm going to work myself to the death, pretty much. I am going to grind and grind and hustle and hustle. I'm going to work from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to sleep. And it's because I had this belief, as I'm sure many of you guys do as well, that if you're not working hard, you are not deserving of success. And I wanted to show everyone that I was working hard. And I wanted to show everyone that I could hustle and that I could suffer And now I just see that as a total and utter waste of my time and energy and life, (laughs) right? So how can you make things easier for yourself? And that kind of brings me swiftly on to the topic of self-care. A lot of times it's difficult to feel productive when you are taking time to take care of yourself. And yet self-care is one of the most important aspects of being an entrepreneur. So... I'll give you a great example. This week, I'm now recording this on a Friday. And this week is the second week that I'm implementing my time blocking and tracking my time. Now that I'm back in the habit of, you know, obviously going to work every day after I took, I think it was a few weeks off from my sister's wedding. You know, I really want to hit the ground running. And so I know when I time track, I'm so much more efficient. And I've now started implementing the the time blocking as well and putting it into my calendar. And I've noticed the first week I hit the ground running. I was full of energy. It was amazing. The second week, we've also just moved house. So there's like little tasks here and there that I've been needing to take care of, like unpacking and putting things in the right place and da, da, da. And I'm still not there yet, but every day, just a little bit more. And I noticed that on Tuesday and Wednesday, I felt so depleted. Like I just had no energy I did not feel like doing any work. I did not feel like being productive. I just felt drained. There's always going to be those times when your body is just screaming at you like, oh my gosh, I need to rest. I need to sleep. And it's going to be hard to listen to it. You're going to have that story in your head running of like, you're lazy. You're not productive. What's wrong with you? You're wasting time, da, da, da. But it's so important to take care of yourself. You are the business owner, which means that you are the living life force behind your business. You are, in many cases, the face of your business. You are the person making the driving decisions behind your business. You are the ones coming up with all of the creative ideas behind your business. It's a full-time job and it's an exhausting job. And oftentimes I find myself comparing myself to someone who just like clocks in and clocks out at a regular nine to five job. And I'm starting to realize that that's really unfair of me to do to myself. And in a way, it's me bullying myself, especially when I take the time to take care of myself. And it's something that I'm actively working on is like knowing that when you run your own business, you're at a completely different level of accountability and responsibility. There's so much more resting on your shoulders, whether you're aware of it or not, than when you're clocking in and out for a nine to five job. And don't get me wrong, I have plenty of friends and family who are killing it at their nine to five job. They work damn hard and there's a lot of responsibility on their shoulders too. But at the end of the day, they know that when they go home at night, they are getting their paid salary. There's like no stress when it comes to that, 
right? When I go to sleep at night, I'm not just thinking about my salary. I'm thinking about Laura's salary. I'm thinking about the salary of this new person that we're going to hire. I'm thinking about the future of the business. There's so much more responsibility when you're a business owner. And it's okay to need a break. And it's okay to rest when you need to rest. And so a big part of this whole productivity and time management thing is being able to be self-aware enough to realize when you're on a high and when you need to run because you're productive and your momentum is high and you're feeling good and you're feeling all the good vibes and also being able to be self-aware enough to realize when you need a break, when you need to sleep, when you need to relax and recharge. So I'm a big proponent of like just giving that a voice and really kind of bringing home the point that self-care is a really big part of this too. Taking care of yourself is a really big part of this. Self-awareness is a really big part of this. And a big part of that when you're looking at productivity is getting enough sleep. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough sleep? Because eight hours is really like what you should be aiming for. I know everyone has different sleeping patterns. I, for the longest time, thought it was seven hours. And then someone, I think last year, I realized it was eight hours. And I was like, oh, so now I aim for eight hours. And that means that I have an alarm set on my phone half an hour before my bedtime that's like, yo, time to get ready for bed. So I know exactly when I need to be closing up shop and heading towards my bed. So just a quick break in the show to emphasize how much we love you if you've already subscribed and left a rating and review. We show up for y'all every Monday and we love seeing y'all show up for us in the ratings and reviews section of the iTunes podcast app. To say thank you, here's one of my favorites from RD Mama from the USA. She said, this is my go-to online business podcast. I love how Alex shares her real life tips and her real life struggles. Not only is it fun to listen to, but I also feel like I get valuable ideas and perspectives for my own business. I also love that the episodes are on the shorter side so I can more easily fit them into my day. Girl, RD Mama, thank you so much for the love. I'm sending a huge hug all the way from me to you. Thank you. Okay, let's get back to the show. So that's what I wanted to say about productivity. Now I want to kind of dive into more of the tactical tips and give you suggestions around, you know, what tools I use and what tools you should definitely be considering. So firstly, a digital calendar. I speak to so many people who are like, no, I like pen and paper. Oh, it's so much better pen and paper. Actually, no. I do so much moving around of my tasks and changing my tasks and altering the times of my tasks. I have no clue how you guys with pen and paper are managing to be flexible with your calendars. Not just that, but at any given moment, I can pick up my phone, swipe to the left. You know, you have like that little home, I don't know what to call it on the iPhone. When you swipe from left to right, which I guess means swiping right. And I said, swipe left, whatever. You know what I mean? Takes you to the home screen and I've set it up so that all of my calendar, my entire calendar shows there. So I can very quickly and easily go and see, I get a good third big picture view of my day and I'm good to go. If you're not using a digital calendar, I highly suggest starting to use one, especially if you're going to be time tracking and if you're going to be blocking out times in your calendars for your particular tasks. Okay. I use Google Cal. I love Google Calendar. That's what I recommend. It's super easy. It syncs with everything. So check out Google Calendar if, if you have no idea where to get started. And yeah, the next thing I want to talk to you about is task management. I use Asana. That's A-S-A-N-A. I used to use Things and I loved that too. Of course, I'm going to recommend Asana because that's what I'm currently using. Again, if you are using a pen and paper to-do list Oh God, I just, I just can't. (laughs) I just can't. It was such a game changer for me when I switched over to a digital task management app. I highly suggest taking an online course to help you find a system that's going to work well for you. I have one that I strongly recommend. I'm going to include the link to that course in the show notes. And one thing I will say and y'all should know about me, is that I don't recommend anything unless I've taken it and loved it. This 
course on Asana changed the game for me. I recommend it to every single one of you. I believe it's only $100 at the time of this recording. Please buy it using the link in my show notes because I will get a kickback. Yes, I'm an affiliate. I strongly believe that if I find something that I love and something that I recommend to everyone, I want to be an affiliate of it. So I'm putting that out there. I am an affiliate, but I still like regardless of if you buy it through me or not, it's an excellent online course about Asana that's not only going to help you learn how to manage your to-dos, but it's going to give you templates. It's going to show you how to basically save time using Asana. So definitely check it out. doesn't matter what kind of business owner you are. It's going to be beneficial for you. So if you're just getting started in time management, I'd say that's an excellent place to start. The next thing I want to talk about are scheduling apps. The amount of people that I meet who offer some kind of one-on-one service, whether it's, you know, they're doing your nails or whether it's one-on-one coaching and it requires scheduling. It requires a client to schedule an appointment with you. And they're still doing this thing where their client texts them and says, Hey, are you free at this time? Uh, no. Are you free at this time? Uh, no. Listen, just set up an online system where someone can go in, see different time slots. It syncs with your calendar. So it knows exactly when you're busy and when you're not busy. And your clients can go in, book an appointment with you, and it syncs automatically to your calendar. To me, this is such a no brainer. I use Acuity Scheduling, but one thing you should know is that there's so many different options, right? So go do some research, see what's going to be the best option for your niche and industry. But scheduling apps, if you are someone who schedules appointments with people, it is, oh, it's a game changer. Even for me, podcasts, right? When we're scheduling podcast interviews, we're not going back and forth on times. We send them a calendar link, they go in, they see what's available, and they slot themselves in. The next thing, which I already mentioned, time tracking, right? So you can track your time either using Google Calendar and just like, have a calendar specifically for time tracking where you go in and you're like, okay, I did this from this time to this time. I did that from this time to this time. Right now I'm using the app called Hours Tracker, H-O-U-R-S Tracker. There's also another app or website called Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. The importance is to have clarity and awareness over how you spend your time. Amen, right? I don't think I need to go into that any further, but this is absolutely something that you should be doing if you want to get the most out of your day. The next thing, and this is something that is so fun (laughs) and saves so much time. If there's anything that you find yourself typing again and again and again and again, you should 100% be using a text expander. So for example, if you, you know, for me, something that I'm always typing out is Instagram.com forward slash Alex Beaton. People are always like, where can I find you on Instagram? So I always have to type that out. Now I just have a text expander. I've downloaded one called a text and I just type out the dollar sign and then I put I. So dollar sign for me means anything that's business related. So dollar sign, I, I is for Instagram, and it automatically types out my Instagram URL. So anything from URLs to addresses to common responses to emails, maybe your email footer. There's so many different things that can be used for this. So that is something that I highly recommend that you look into. And it's something that I learned from Tiago Forte, who is a productivity expert and someone that I'm really looking up to at the moment, someone whose content I'm thoroughly enjoying. And I just interviewed him for the podcast. So he's going to be a podcast guest very soon. So keep an eye out for him, Tiago Forte. The next thing that I've been using for years and has been a game changer for me is password management. The more you put yourself out there online, the more at risk you become just for hackers and for people who are trying to steal your information, steal your money, steal your identity. It is so important that you have different passwords for every single account because if one account gets hacked and you're using the same password for everything, you're screwed, right? So I like to use a password management tool. There's one called 1Password. There's one called LastPass. There's a few different ones. And basically what you do is you create one account through their service and through their service, they will basically go through and help you create passwords for all of your other accounts. And then guess what? Every time you log in on your computer, 
or from your phone and it's asking you for username and password, the app will go ahead and input in your safe username and password. The brilliant thing is that they are creating difficult passwords that are very hard to guess that you will never remember yourself. And the best part is that you don't have to because this password management app has got it for you. The next thing that I want to speak to you about, this has more to do with distractions. I see articles all the time when I'm online because I have to be online. My business is online and I will stumble across an article that looks super interesting. And I'm like, I really want to come back and read this, but I don't have the time right now to read it. So I use something called the pocket app. And the Pocket app is basically a Google Chrome extension. Google Chrome is my browser and it allows me to save articles that I want to read and I can come back to them and read them later. So that is something that I highly recommend. It's great at ending your distractions without stopping you from going back to check out things that you want to check out later. Another Google Chrome extension that I cannot recommend any further is one called Video Speed Controller. Every single time I watch a video online, I watch it at 1.8 speed, and it is because of this app. It allows me to save so much time. I'm almost cutting my time of watching videos in half by using this extension. It's super simple. Every single time I see a video, if I want it to be in fast forward, I press the key G on my keyboard, and it automatically changes it to 1.8 speed, And so I'm watching it at like a fast forwarded speed. I still get all the information I'm looking for, but I don't have to to listen to it at the slow speed, right? So that's one thing I definitely recommend that you look into. And then also, like I said at the beginning of this episode, just looking into anything, any kind of shortcuts, whether it's keyboard shortcuts or templates or anything that can speed up your workflow is going to be an absolute game changer. Lastly, I could not do an episode on productivity and time management without recommending this book. This book has been the most life-changing book for me when it comes to time management, and it's something that I absolutely recommend you check out, read, and digest thoroughly. It is called Getting Things Done by David Allen. Again, every single resource that I have mentioned in this episode can be found in the show notes over at podcast.alexbeden.com. This is episode 71. So this book basically taught me the system for task management. So you have a to-do list. How do you know what to work on first? How do you know which tasks you should prioritize over other tasks? He teaches a system for managing your to-do list and it is a game changer, right? So go and check it out. You'll be introduced to the Eisenhower matrix, which is basically dividing your tasks between urgent and important tasks, important and not urgent tasks, urgent and not important tasks, and not important tasks and not urgent tasks. It sounds more confusing than it is. Check out the book because it's a no-brainer. So here is everything. I'm going to summarize it for you, right? Because I feel like I've just given you so much information and I want you to walk away from this changed. I want this to be the episode that you recommend to everyone moving forward as the episode that completely revolutionized the way that you manage your time and the way that you show up as a productive human being. So let me break it down for you. The very first thing that I would start doing if I were you is I would start using some sort of calendar, digital calendar. I highly recommend Google Calendar. From there, you want to make sure that you understand how to manage your tasks. So I would recommend reading the book, Getting Things Done by David Allen. At the same time or afterwards, I would recommend that you take the online course about Asana that I've recommended for you in the show notes. And in the show notes as well, I will put all of this in order, right? Once you've done that, so you've got the calendar, you've read the book, you've done the course. Now you can go about really putting in your tasks, tracking your time, time blocking everything. And actually that's something you can do starting today, right? Start time blocking, start calendar, start tracking your time and start time blocking and basically scheduling out your entire day so that you know this is what I'm working on at this particular time. Read the book, take the course. From there, once you've done those two things, 
I really believe that you are going to be so much better prepared. Yes, all of these other things like the scheduling apps and you know the task management app, that's like an absolute no-brainer. You have to, and I highly recommend Asana. The text expanders, the password management, all that jazz, I highly recommend. But the best place to start is Google Calendar, Asana, take the course, read the book, and I promise you, you'll be in a much better place than you could even imagine. So I want to say a huge thank you to every single person who has listened so far to this episode. I am loving you guys so much. I've started doing something new where on my Instagram page, we are listening to the episodes every week live. So I'm really excited because it's something that I wanted to try for the longest time. We're actually doing it now for the next few weeks to just test it and see if it's something that I feel like I want to continue doing. So if you're not following me on Instagram already, you can do so at Alex Beaton. Go and check out the show notes of this episode at podcast.alexbeaton.com. And your task for this week, because you know I like to challenge you, your challenge for this week is to schedule all of your tasks on your to-do list into your calendar at the beginning of every single day and then track your time as you are going throughout your day. Try doing that for the next week and I will be showing up on Instagram to support you. We're going to be talking about it a lot in the story. So if you're looking for that extra level of support as you try to really implement this into your week, I will be there for you at Alex Beaton on Instagram. But yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun thing for you to implement. And I can't wait to hear about your results. Remember, I'm always ready to hear about any results that you have from anything that you hear on the show. Feel free to email me, contact at alexbeaton.com. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you again next week for episode 72. In episode 72, I will be speaking to Jessica Williamson, who launched a swimwear label called Ete. And within the first week of her launch, she was invited to showcase at New York Fashion Week. And impressively, she took establishing her swimwear line to a six-figure business in her first year. So we spoke about everything from like, you know, does she have a budget to what her zone of genius is? We spoke about how she was able to build her business to be so successful. We spoke about how she's still living at home with her parents, how she's really not been taking much of a wage, how she's looking at this as like a long-term investment. And she talks to us all about building a brand. It's really and truly an incredible episode. So I will see you next week, episode 72. Can't wait. Talk to you then. If you've reached this far in the episode, that must mean that you loved what you just heard. And I want to say thank you for listening. I also want to prompt you to take a simple action step that would really make my day and really help support what I do here on the show. I would deeply appreciate it if you could take two minutes of your time to leave us a review. To do it, it's super simple. You're just going to open the podcast app on your phone, search for On Purpose with Alex Beaton, scroll down until you see the ratings and review section, and then tap the write a review button. Your reviews are what help support this show. So please, if you are enjoying this content, take the 60 seconds that it will take and go and write a review. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I want you to know how much I appreciate your attention. I want to thank you for listening and I can't wait for you to listen to the next episode.